Good afternoon. Hi. My presentation will be about eating with a good conscience. Current estimates indicate that, on average, produce travels over 2,000 kilometers to come from a farm to your plate. This distance is equal to, nearly equal to, flying from Istanbul to Budapest, Hungary, and coming back. This is such a long distance, isn't it? So what can we do then? We can buy local foods. Buying local foods is associated with freshness and better taste, higher nutritional value, more support for producers, farmers, local farmers, and less environmental concerns. So it's a good thing. We can try to limit animal foods in our diet. A diet comprising less animal and more plant foods are good. These type, types of diets will deliver both health and environmental benefits. As you can see, you can see a cow. Uh, as you can see, meat and meat products have the greatest impact on the environment. In other words, they harm the environment the most and they put the greatest strain on earth. Dairy products, unfortunately, follow meat and meat products. Most people think that they need to take protein from meat. But let me assure you that meat and meat products are not the only sources of protein. So there are other sources with medium to high protein content. And let me name a few. I can actually show you some. So we have milk and dairy products. We have eggs. We have legumes. We have nuts and seeds. I have the nuts in here. We have some other stuff as well, like quinoa and chia seeds and soybeans. So, And there are some unusual, well, currently un unusual sources of protein too. And they have wings. Yes, they are the insects. They are the edible insects. So in the future, in the very near future, be prepared to have a bug burger. This is going to be reality. So instead of having a hamburger, please be prepared to have a bug burger. So, okay, sir and madam, did you enjoy your bug burger? Oh, yes, thank you very much. Okay, how about health? If you eat less meat, you will get less fat, less cholesterol, and less saturated fat. If you do that, you will reduce the risk of having heart disease, stroke, and cancer. You will also reduce the risk of becoming obese or dying prematurely. Okay, what goodness do plants have for us? Plants are very good sources. They are generous sources of dietary fiber, antioxidants, and some other useful plant chemicals. So they are good. So please be greedy when it comes to consuming your fruits and vegetables. Try to eat from all colors, all shapes, and all tastes. Okay, what else can we do as the inhabitants of the earth? What you see on the slide is, I think, the most debated question on earth. The question is, why do we put on weight? The answer to this is actually simple. I'm just showing you, showing you the answer. So, it's a simple equation. Energy in should be equal to energy out. It looks simple, it sounds simple, but it's not very easy to implement. Do you know 
what happens when you consume food beyond your energy requirement? Do you? If you consume food beyond your energy requirement, it will turn into this. This is a replica of body fat. And body fat will be turning into It is slightly heavy, so you need to bear with me. Body fat will be, that little body fat will be turning into this. Obesity and overweight in time. So I'm sorry, I will not be able to carry this for long, so I'm going to make it sit on the chair. This is approximately 15 kilos, all right? So if you consume anything beyond your energy requirement, you produce body fat, and when body fat accumulates, you will get obesity or overweight. So what can we do? What is the solution? What we can do, if you take extra calories, you can do this, you can do physical activity, all right? Either this or that. So doing physical activity is good. Instead of driving to the market that is just round the corner, you can walk or cycle. And if you do that, you will remain physically active and you will help save the environment. Why? Because you will be, we will be spending less, I mean, we will be using less of the energy sources and we will be producing less amounts of these harmful greenhouse gases that I was talking about previously. So try to do physical activity whenever you can. Let's have a look at this. This is to show you how food portion sizes have changed within the last 20 or 30 odd years. Nine, we have two cookies in here. This is like what was 20 years ago, and this is our current portions. So the difference between the two cookies is approximately 90 calories. So if we take this extra calories, and this is just by one cookie, what you need to do to spend this extra 90 calories is that you need to walk fast, I mean really fast, very briskly, for 15 minutes for a 60 kilo person. So it depends on your body weight. But if you're around 60 kilos, just by eating this bigger cookie, you need to spend this energy by walking very fast for 15 minutes. This is an important topic. Because quite controversially, we started eating more and moving less within the last 20 or 30 years. We have oversized meals in one hand, and we have the technology, this is a remote for a tele, on the other, right? So we have electronic appliances at home that makes life much easier for us. We have the automatic dishwashers and washing machines, etc. And we have some lovely electronic gadgets. I'm sure you all have one. You have your mobile phones, we have our tablets, and there are game consoles as well. So the net result of this is that we have more obese and overweight people. And the situation is getting worse day by day. A recent study revealed that there are now more obese people than underweight. Healthcare professionals, they are very much terrified about this and they are giving alarming messages. The bottom line, we should try to avoid excess energy intake while we're having a nutritionally balanced diet, obviously. Why? Firstly, because it is healthier. And secondly, less food requires fewer sources. 
think about our environment. Any calories we consume beyond our need is a waste. This is a waste. That is a waste too in the form of body fat. Let me just give you very small tips about proper portion sizes, if you wish. So um, usually for meat and meat products, the right portion is as big as the palm of a lady. Not gentlemen, because we have smaller hands, ladies. My height is 170 centimeters. So this is a piece of chicken. So it is nearly to cover my hand. I have a piece of fish, and again, as much as to cover the palm of my hand, and this is, again, one portion of a uh, meatball, basically, or meat patties. And I have these as well. I have brown rice, so this is one portion. This is half a cup. Let me just show it to you from the side. This is half a cup, this is one portion. And let me just confess, I have never eaten this small amount of rice in my life, or this much of spaghetti or pasta, okay? But this is the real size. We eat a lot. We eat more than what we need. Okay. Let's have a look at these chocolate truffles. They are indulging, aren't they? They are, yes. Chocolate truffle is what we call an energy dense food. Basically, it's very rich in calories, but it is very poor in terms of the essential nutrients that we need to take every day to maintain our health. And as well, it is a processed food, so they may taste good, but unfortunately, they have no goodness left in them. I'm sorry to say that. Okay, let's have a look at this shopping trolley. So in this shopping trolley, you can see carbonated beverages, you can see ready-to-eat meals, and you can see ice cream as well. So what is common about these foods? They are all processed. They are all processed and they are heavily packaged too. Do we need them as a part of a healthy diet? No. Okay, can we consume them from time to time in moderate amounts? The answer is yes. Yes, we can consume them from time to time, but in moderate amounts, not in extremes. Okay, um, with the processed foods, there comes the problem of packaging. And with the packaging, as you can see, there comes the problem of environmental pollution. We produce so much waste that we keep them in the landfills. We keep dumping them in the landfills. There are now some countries, for example, America, they export their garbage to other countries. So, this is important, I think. Packaging, processed foods, this is how these countries try to get rid of their homegrown garbage. But packaging materials such as plastic is not the only item that you can find in the bins. What you can find is sometimes is food, is actually edible food, which means that, you know, that food can be eaten by us quite safely. So this is a very common picture that we can see in Turkey. So this is called food waste. Food waste is the food losses occurring during the retail and the final consumption of food. 
A recent study suggests that roughly one third of the food produced for human consumption is wasted globally. America is losing up to 40% of the food from farm to fork and to landfill. 40% is a lot. It's nearly half of the food produced goes into the landfill or the garbage. So what we can do, we can try to minimize overconsumption. Please think about your health and the environment and the problem of world hunger when you consume a food next time. And remember that we only have this earth to live on. Try to think of your future children, uh, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren who will have to live on our one and only blue planet. Eat with a good conscience. Thank you.